All right, update on ApeCoin. So previously, when we've been doing our analysis on ApeCoin, we've been looking at the oscillators, we've been looking at momentum indicators, and most importantly, we've been running off moving averages like the four hourly EMA ribbons to tell us whether we're in a bullish trend or a bearish trend today as we have been breaking down into this bearish trend for quite some period of time on the four hour i wanted to do a deep dive and microdose a different type of theory or a different hypothesis that we haven't previously checked out on apecoin so for this i'm going to be pulling up a new chart and we are going to be checking out elliott wave theory so to start with elliott wave theory is not my favorite theory in the entire world i think it is very very uh, dependent on how you draw them because it is very subjective as to how you can draw elliott waves when the downtrend starts when the downtrend ends where the price targets are it's all very an ambiguous so for this i will be covering my normal analysis talking about where i think apecoin's going talking about my dca that i recently did and everything talking about the market but for this video i wanted to show an interesting theory on elliott wave theory because looking at the chart I always like to reset these charts and get uh, alt alternative perspectives on the market as to where we could be moving. So let's check out this Elliott wave theory. So starting off with the typical five wave before we do get into our ABC correction. If you are new to Elliott waves, Elliott wave theory is the theory that markets move in waves and we move in five waves when we're in bullish impulses and when we're moving to the downside it is also five waves to the downside. Now when you're in a bullish phase because this is what we're going to be talking about for ApeCoin so we're going to be talking about bullish Elliott wave theory to start with. You can see you have three bullish impulses you have five waves in total you can see your bullish waves are always the odd numbers so you can see one three and five are your bullish impulses and your your, your even numbers your twos and fours these are always your correctory phases so you can see we move in five waves one two three four five and then we have an a b c correction before moving up with your next five wave now within these mic within these waves we have microwaves and i'm not going to be deep diving into the microwaves but you can see when we do have these one two three four five waves with each of these impulses we have a one two three four five wave and that is your first wave one complete then you have an a b c correction into your two correctory phase and then once again one two three four five into your three wave a b c correction into your fourth correctory wave now like i said i'm going to be looking at this on a more macro perspective and i want to point out what i believe is where this wave started so we had an accumulation phase right we came down to this level and you can see we had a sizable increase i would consider this wave one correctory wave down to wave two and if you wanted to do your abcs you could argue a b and then c i mean it fits pretty perfectly then you can see your wave three now in elliott wave theory your wave threes and your wave fives are normally meant to be a lot bigger than wave one typically with what i've noticed is wave three is the biggest wave however wave five if you are going on traditional elliott wave theory it should always be bigger than wave one doesn't have to be bigger than wave two uh, or sorry wave three rather but it does have to be bigger than the impulse in wave one and just to show you what i mean with the five waves if we can find i would say you know we came here depending on how you want to draw i'd say starting the bottom of the downtrend from this wick here you've got a one two three four five and then into your a b c you can see a b c and depending on how you draw it because i mean like i said you can draw it from here which is why i say elliott wave theory is not one of my favorite theories because it is somewhat ambiguous as to where you do want to draw these macro trends but the five wave i feel like the five wave we can all agree on right this looks like a pretty decent five wave i don't think you could draw this in any other way uh, or if you did you know you might want to discount the first wick and then draw something like this but then even then i, I yeah I, I really don't think that works so i in my opinion this is very unambiguous i think this is the number one way that you would draw the five wave going on in the market so what is so important about this because as you can see we're having our correctory wave right now we've had 
an A, B, and it looks like we're coming down to this C wave that we haven't quite found where we are bottoming. Now, where do C waves normally bottom on the correctory C wave? Well, if we come over to typical Elliott wave theory, depending on what theory you draw from, these should all be the same because in your ABC correction, some of them have it drawn slightly slightly in different places, but traditional Elliott wave theory, the C wave on the correctory wave should always be just slightly above slash on the one wave. So in theory, if this Elliott wave theory is going to play out for Ape, uh, I would say the candle body close is what you should be running off on this wave. And I would say, according to Elliott wave theory, the bottom should be in. Now, like I said, Elliott wave theory is not my favorite type of analysis. It is just, however, another way of gauging the market, looking at where we are in the macro perspective and gauging, you know, have we had our C wave correctory phase? Because, you know, like I said, I, I do believe in Elliott wave theory. I do believe these five ways and ABCs are very blatantly obvious when you go through the market. I made a Bitcoin, uh, a, I made a Bitcoin video on this as well. And it's it, Elliott wave theory does seem to call a lot of these tops a lot of the time when people think we're going to go up for that next wave, you always get that ABC coming in. So in theory, as we are on the one wave right now, we really should have found a bottom for ApeCoin. So this would mean that we should be heading up at some point soon. Now, that is basically all I wanted to show you for the Elliott wave theory. Now, let's jump into this let me let me get back all of my indicators to start with let me see if it will let me go back far enough to where i've got indicators so i really don't want to add them all back thank god so now we're back on our chart like that never ever happened we can get rid of this chart and we'll be running off our normal chart from now on um you know what should we keep that no i think it's too late it's too late we'll, we'll pull it up another time if we do have a reversal and then we can see if elliott wave theory does play out uh, a lot of the time now looking at your momentum indicators if we start off with the squeeze mom we are starting to lose a bit of momentum we are coming down to the heart line though so the bulls do have a chance of resetting it the bearish momentum is really starting to subside as we are going sideways now i've been saying this in my past couple of videos originally i had my dca up here at 1456 in the last couple of eight videos i let you know and i let you know in the discord as well join the discord the link is in the description if you want to join but i told you that you know coming into my dca the dca would be at 13 dollars and 71 cent obviously my money is where my mouth is i already had that buy order in place i, I didn't even really know that i hit my uh, my order until like an hour later uh, when i was on discord and people were asking me if i dca and i click on the ape chart and i saw that the price had wicked very heavily below my dca so yes i have dca back into ape coin if you're wondering uh, what do you mean I DCA'd back into ApeCoin? Well, we got into ApeCoin. The last trade we got in was round about this $13. We took profits at the $23.75 region. Uh, we knew this was going to be a big area of resistance because this was the 1.618 FIB. We were also targeting the 2.618 as a later Fibonacci target coming in at $33 basically. So now we've come down to my DCA. Just so you know, I sold 25% of my Ape at $23.00. And I simply just used all of that money to re-DCA uh, back into the market. So coming down to these lower levels, we got just over a 42% discount on our APE. So I'm very happy about that. And that's what we talked about when we were all the way up here taking profit at 23. We said, if you were in on this trade with me, it is a win-win situation. Why is it a win-win situation? Well, we've taken profit at this level. So what, what can happen? I, we, we could go sideways for 10 years, but I don't think that's going to happen. We're either going to go up and hit my next price target, which means that I take more profit, which means that's a win, or we come back down to your lower price targets and I get to DCA in for 42% cheaper. So it seemed like a no-brainer to me. It was a win-win situation. I'm going to do exactly the same thing when we do get ready for our next bullish cycle. Uh, back to the top. So where could ApeCoin potentially be bottoming out? Now, we're kind of hovering around your 0.5 Fibonacci from your previous low to high. Let's see, from the most recent macro impulse, 
Whereabouts are we in the market? You've broken below your 786. So technically speaking, this could get a little bit more ugly. You know, bear in mind where I DCA'd, it might not be the bottom. We might go lower. I was fully aware of that when I DCA'd. However, having a 42% discount on the ape that I sold, when I do believe ApeCoin is a good, I don't want to say long-term project, but it's a good mid-term project over the next year. I think it will maintain its hype. Uh, I, I do think this is something fairly decent uh, to be doing. Now, coming over to the one hourly time frames, you can actually see we had a bullish confirmation that we were... Actually, let me get rid of this. Oh, no, we didn't. So we, we've never flipped. No, we have. We came down here. You can see, look, we bounced. We, we confirmed it as support. And like I always say in my videos, a bounce does not mean anything until you take out the previous invalidation point. You actually took out the previous invalidation point and then went lower. So I do not care about what happens on the one hourly anymore. The one hourly time frame has shown me that on Ape, you have fake outs. On the four hour, though, I don't think there's ever been a fake out. So you can see this whole uptrend was supported by the EMAs. Once we broke below them, you tried to flip them, failed retest. Uh, we broke bullish here. And you kind of broke back below. Yeah, because you did not retest. You didn't make a new high at which point after you retested. So that was not a fake out. You moved back down while we were bearish. And then you can see we broke above. We retested it. And as you were pushing back above this level here on the four hour, that was when we broke back bullish. That is personally what I'm looking for um, for ApeCoin right now. Like like I said, I DCA'd back into ApeCoin because I don't think ApeCoin is like one of these move to earn cryptos where it's really, really, really risky. Obviously, there's a ton of risk that you're taking on by picking up um, basically a, a crypto with an ape's face on it. I mean, it's not exactly got the greatest fundamentals in the entire world, but nonetheless, I think hype will continue to drive it. I think as long as the Bored Ape Yacht Club NFTs do well, then I think ApeCoin will do well. So if you're looking at a technical perspective on where technically we would have a confirmed uptrend, it would be at the moment that you took out the four hourly MA and flipped them. So, you know, this is obviously a, a rough draft of what I would need to see, but hypothetically, if something like this played out, uh, re-getting back into the market at $16.50 would make sense. However, like I said, I do think DCAing ApeCoin for these much, much cheaper price targets at least made sense for me. And that kind of goes against my investment thesis because in all of my altcoin videos, I always say I do not DCA altcoins as they go down. And there's a very simple reason for that. I DCA Bitcoin because I believe it will be around in the next 10 years. I do not DCA altcoins because you know, who, who's going to say that ApeCoin is going to be around in the next 10 years? Well, I mean, obviously it will be on the ETH blockchain, but, you, you know, these these fads, these big phases, these bubble cryptos, they come and they go. They come and they go all the time. So I don't think ApeCoin is going to be something that you want to hold for the long term. I do think in the next 10 years that Bitcoin will probably outperform Ape. Uh, but nonetheless, you know, looking at Ape, I do think it will be good to hold over the next year. All of these altcoin trades, they are simply ways for me to reaccumulate and buy more Bitcoin. So I hope that that video helped. Like I said, I've already got back into the market. We can go lower. So from a technical perspective, you know, I really would not get euphoric until you do hop back above this previous four hour. Like 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 I showed you, we look at this trend and the four hourly time frame perfectly defines what's going on. So I would not try and fight the trend on this one. Trend is your friend until the end. We're clearly in a downtrend. I DCA'd, but you know, th th this is just what I felt like uh, would be best for my portfolio specifically. You always do what's best for you. None of this is financial advice, just my opinion on the market. And as always, cowboy out. Peace.